This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. This is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's cup of coffee in the big time, yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. We'll go to NXT. I'll go to the CWC. Hell yeah. We'll be here. We'll be at 205 Live. I can truly say that I have the whole damn world in my head. Goodbye? And good night. Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Russell Cast, presented by RVT Entertainment on the BrokenInfinite.com, Podomatic.com, iTunes, and live on RVT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel. And wherever else we find this fine audio recording. We're talking about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name is Matty J. That is TWK. Hi. <laughs> wow, why so glum after all the news? I have my reasons. Mainly because we forgot to play this clip last week. Oh my god! You're absolutely right. It was Thanksgiving. We god. broke a tradition. Shame on you, shame on me, shame on your pants. Shame on your pants, too. I'm not even wearing any pants. Well, shame on whatever hell you're wearing. I'm wearing cargo shorts. Well, shame on those shorts, then. Fuck you! Well, hey, you told me to shame on my pants. How That's do you because... think I feel? About as, I think... feel, feel about as good I as think... forget. I feel about as good as forgetting old turkey buzzard. Nonetheless, there is some good anyway. news. There's some bad news. There's some news that falls in between for this week in the world of professional wrestling, Mister Matty. Yes, it, well, yes, it is. We got your news in your third in your first segment. In our third, uh, uh... You know what, Harrowball? You know what? Not only do you need the image of me not wearing pants in your head, you need the image of me wearing nothing but a banana hammock. Steve-O style. Damn right! Have fun with that! And people will go, why are you encouraging T-Dub? Sometimes you just need to encourage a T-Dub. That's all I'm going to say there. Also... Also, hairball, that's what happens when you interrupt me. Also, you made the list. Moving on. Um, <laughs> now, yeah, uh, back into series. So we'll, uh, third segment due to an unfortunate release, Dr. Evil quotes. We decided to, 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 better late than never, let's pay tribute to the music man himself, Jim Johnston. Since we're doing that, how do you ask? Well, we got nothing else to do. How about a Russell Cast countdown? It's been way too long since we've done one. Too long. The last couple of weeks, I've been wanting to do a countdown because, like I said, it's been way too long. So now we finally have an excuse. We got to an do excuse it. to do it, and probably the one of the best slash worst excuses, but it's an excuse. So there you go. <laughs> uh, oh, LPH, um, you and I need to talk. But we'll get to that. Emails. Shall we get to? Uh, shall we get to the thing? Pretty sure. Pretty get, sure we want to get to the thing. Get to the clip of the week, please. Yeah, we do. I was racking my brain all week, trying to find a clip of the week, and then news of a particular broken one started peeking up again. To the point, a video was made. Ah, yes, did 
Eiffel! Flip of the week. Take Olison! Ah. Signor, procure my coat of battle. Quiet. Rojo. How about that, huh? Also filmed in, in the style of a Bray Wyatt promo. Here to say, got no about to be back, you know. Got news on the news. Don't get me hanging around. And notice, people, notice. I kept even kept with the gimmick. Yeah, Piano yeah. version of Back in Black. You're fucking welcome. Oh. Best news of the week started, uh, I think, uh, Monday night. We'll start with that, and then we'll go to the rest of the list. It started Monday night. Bray Wyatt versus Matt Hardy. Uh, Hardy loses quite handily. Now, he's been working through uh, a kayfabe injury or two. And, and uh... Devastated by the fact that he was the first person to lose to Bray Wyatt in forever. Yeah. One of the bit was one of the one of the biggest TV uh, wins for for Bray Wyatt and a one of the TV wins for a while. Yeah, he was like, I couldn't he even goes get to the, the corner. Jason Jordan beat. Yeah, it's like literally he's back in the corner. Uh, delete, 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 and the crowd didn't pick it up. A, you are a loser. For that crowd there, fuck off. But everyone else went, oh my god. <laughs> And then the tweets started, and then the news broke. Well, he that he had signed. We had, I think we covered this about a couple of weeks ago, where he actually filed um, for trademark for the Broken Hardy name and gimmick. Yeah, and and uh, it and seems anthem, official now that and anthem uh, pretty much saying no, no, we're gonna fuck off. We're gonna we're, we're done. We're done. Yeah, I think pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think pretty much. Uh, like uh, some uh, money person at uh, Anthem went over to Ed Norholm and went. Uh, yeah, we can't afford to keep fighting this anymore. We got to kind of stay here in Canada. We can't go back to the U.S. to the air court system. So could you just drop this now, please? And he was like, basically Lindbergh from the, from the off, from office space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you could stop fucking around with Matt Hardy and wasting all our money, that'd be great. I do and not so do now, a good, I do not go to do Lindbergh, but still. That, that wasn't stands. bad. That wasn't bad. It was okay, but not not the best. But you get the I'll idea. You get the idea. Anthem yeah, so, pretty much said, "Okay, we're 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 done. We're not going to waste our money anymore." So, and if, and if WWE wants to do this right, all I have to do is just a few things. Number one, send a camera crew to North Carolina. Yeah. Number two, yeah, film stuff that happens in North Carolina. Yes. Number three, show what happens in North Carolina on a big old Titantron on Monday Night Raw. Yep. And finally. Print money. Yes. That's it. That's this, is liter- this is literally broken Matt. Har- Step one, broken Matt. Or woken Matt because they want to keep some of the gimmick. You know, they got to keep it for themselves, which is fair. And it's, it's WWE. What do you want to do? So, step one, woken Matt Hardy. Step two, meh. step three, profit. Essentially, yes. Yeah, just. And yeah, the meh is literally. <laughs> it's, it's Matt Hardy. We're going to just. Let him go loose. <laughs> and yeah, the first feud, it looks like it's going to be him versus Wyatt. All of the fuck. Yes. Just, Late. Yes. Like we said, just as long as there are hands off on this as possible, that's all we need. Just have Vince, you know, Vince is like a more of a, a more of a filter, like just to be sure like nothing is like too risque or too out of whack. You know, no, 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 not even no, as not, a filter, not, not in the filter, not loose. in the filter, as in, oh, he has to approve everything in micromatch, as in, he watches a thing and said, okay, tone that bit down, otherwise go nuts. 
I'm I'm kind of worried that even that might be reining it in too much. Just let Matt Hardy do whatever Matt Hardy wants to do, because that's what made the that's what made it work in Impact. Just the fact that they were, they were like, go loose, do whatever you want. They had a volcano, a volcano, and a dilapidated boat, a dilapidated boat, fucking, fucking Morton in a cherry picker, fucking Ricky Morton <laughs> in a cherry picker. Not Hardy, a broken son of a bitch. Put me, put me down. Please put me down, please. <laughs> We had, we had you know what? You know what? You know what? You know, I will settle. I will. I will settle for just one thing. Itchweed. That's that's Itchweed with three E's. No, no. You have to. You have to wait for Itchweed because first you have to introduce Brother Nero. You got. You got to yeah. ease people into this because most yeah. people, if they just see Itchweed out of nowhere, they're going to be confused. They're going to be scared. They're going to run away. That's part of the point. I know, but <laughs> ease them into it. Ease them into it. You know, first introduce Brother Nero. Yeah. Yep. 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 And maybe even bring back the immortal belts just to see the reaction. Oh my god! <laughs> and I would love if to the see immortal it. belt shows up. All of the meta. Yeah. Also, go Kai Master. He tried to kill me with a cherry picker. Yeah, not the, not no no no. Not also, exactly. What am I doing with the logo? Let's put the chat up there for God's sake. There we go. Uh, what's up, DJ Frost? Sure. Frost you got a you got a, you got a question for it? This is a wrestling podcast. And come on in. Ask you ask, ask, ask anything you want. How big is Batista's dick? Besides that, because we don't fucking know. We can we can only All speculate. Right. All right. Fair enough. Fair and hairball and hairball. He's been yeah Of course, Vanguard one. Of course. Vanguard One's back. Senior Benjamin's back. The whole gang is all back together, it seems. Rebby Hardy. Oh, God. Rebby Hardy with a fuck that owl shirt on. WWE TV. That's not going to happen. Never going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> or one thing I'd love to see is her playing the piano at WrestleMania. In fact, what I would love is for this to be an entire multi-month build just to Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. You, you know. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Don't have them interact on screen. I'll just... Aside from like those goofy like Matt Hardy esque segments, just keep on building and building and building to find. We need Bray Wyatt important. promos and Matt Hart broken Matt promos. Also, DJ Frostflame, if you're looking at the uh, page itself, uh, click videos. You'll find that uh, the broadcast of Enemy but Within in there. You should. Should be up there. Um, that being said, fucking a. <laughs> We could gush about this all day, but let's not let's not overhype each other. We can bit. gush because it is easily the best news in wrestling this week. I am happy about it. I do not blame you about it. And you know we're going to watch it. Watch it a lot. And now let's get to our sad news of the week. Yeah, it yeah. was reported yesterday. That Jim Johnston, one of the most respected music composers in the history of professional wrestling, was released from his contract. And that seems to be the story, the fact that he was released because apparently he wanted to keep on his contract, but apparently he, uh, the company didn't want to keep him around. Essentially, because... his contract was running up and WWE was quite comfortable with CFOs. Yes, and apparently uh, it was a case of they think he's too old is the current story. You know what? The sad part is, no matter what the excuse, it's not going to look good for a couple of days. Uh, it's no. just not. And really, it's nothing in CFOs, but there's Jim Johnson has made so many good themes. Which is why, in the third segment, me and Maddie are going to do our top five Jim Johnston themes. That's what it's going to be. So, And it's our favorite. Oh it's our favorites. I'll, I'll pay yeah, favoritism at this point. Yeah, it, like I just changed my list again just because I thought of another one in my Because he's made so <laughs> many classic songs that instantly just get right in your head. Just like... There's so many that at this point, you know, we're going to miss some. At this point, we might do an opening just to see before we hit the list. Just to, you know gush about him for a couple of minutes yeah and 
So yeah, it really sucks. And that obviously, the, the obvious thing, put him in the Hall of Fame, all of the yes for that. People have been asking about that for years and years. He should be in the Hall of Fame. He's because he's contributed so much. You can ask so many wrestlers about the fact that their music was so good that they give him like credit for helping make their careers. It's insane. Just and I have no doubt that if a company wanted, if they have the money, they would hire him in an instant. Oh, they would. Yeah. Like, oof. Best of luck, Jim. And now moving over to, holy shit, history-making news. Asuka defeated Dana Brooke in the quickest match in WWE history. Yeah, that was literally, what, two seconds, three seconds? Yeah, it's the quickest match without a weapon or distraction. That was, like, literally, like, here, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got a little bit of delay. So when I watch it, so I'm, I'm on the Skype call with Feezy and, and, and Jody, but shows your wife for those who don't know. And, uh, you know, Oscar comes out, Dana Brooke comes out. <laughs> that's going to be, that's going to be a thing. Two seconds later, whoo, bang, tap, 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 tap. Okay. A little bit of history with Oscar there. Yeah, uh, before this, I believe the quickest victory, that at least I can remember, it was involving a weapon shot. It was Spike Dudley versus William Regal on Raw for the European title. Yep. Uh, William Regal uh, had brass knucks in his trunks, but he hit one, another pair in the turnbuckle, but the referee caught the one in his trunks, so now the referee was like sort of putting the ones in his trunks, like getting them out of the ring, and Regal's arguing with the referee, so Spike then takes the knucks, hits Regal in the face with it, referee turns around, rings the bell, one, two, three. One, two, three. Ding, ding, ding. New champion. New, uh, quickest Lewis match Spike was Fred. Dudley. Quickest match. I've already the Quickest match was Stratus versus Nidia a long time ago. Uh, I guess we'll have to look up the times on those. We're going to have to. It, it's it's really close. It's one of those. But like, this one, to... though, is undisputably the quickest now. Oh, it, it, yeah. I, I don't think there's a doubt. The bell rang. Two seconds later, the bell rang. And speaking of quick, and when it comes to the quickest betrayal, like that little segue? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. The Hall took out the Singh brothers. Yeah, basically it was a handicap match on SmackDown. Uh, the Singhs versus AJ Styles, and AJ Styles was phenomenal as uh, per the huge. You know... Can I... Can I do the thing? Can I not? Could you not do this? I'm like, I'm doing a freaking... There's an update. And obviously the thing wants me to, to update now. I'm fucking podcasting, asshole! <sighs> anyway, you're going to hear that in about an hour, I'm sure. <sighs> anyway. On to the thing. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Windows track. Windows 10 wants to update, like like a big massive update that's gonna take a long time. Fuck you, that's what I say. Anyways, getting back on track. Yes. <laughs> so AJ Styles taking on the Singh Brothers handicap match, they failed. Mahal was disgusted with their fi continued failure, so he takes them both out. And the second Singh brother took a nasty coloss. Ooh yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> and go kind so, master. It's update on clock, mother. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Let's hope that doesn't ruin the evening. No, I just, uh, I, just hit, the, pick, I just hit pick a time. It'll come back in about an hour or so. Yeah. You know, I'll uh, anyways, update when I'm ready to, to update. Rumor, Moving on. Uh, according to the rumor mill, it seems that the Singh brothers will be sent down to NXT. Which uh, which is a smart move. Do not put them on two hundred five live. God damn it! No, they already they just escaped from there. They escaped from there. Do not put them back there. Yeah, it's like no, we thought we got out. No, no, no. We don't want the Enzo. We don't want the Enzo. We want the band. God damn it! You'll be doing the Enzo dance on there until the end of time. No. That's not true! That's impossible! 
Oh, that's weird reference. Okay. <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Hyped. Anyway. Anyways, <laughs> that wasn't the only betrayal on SmackDown because I was the only one that was calling this. Mojo turned heel. Yeah, not not Zack Ryder, but Mojo. Betrayal. But no, I was saying betrayal. Mojo heel. You talked over the button, but nah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, as I was saying, uh, turn Mojo Hill, they did. So now they're going to have their own mini feud. And I think that will culminate at uh, that's Clash of Champions coming up. Yes. So that's where I'll probably culminate, where I assume that Mojo will get the victory and move up the card. And probably lose the wrong Gronkowski at WrestleMania because of reasons. Uh, possibly. Yeah. Moving over to the wacky and, quite honestly, unpredictable world of Impact Wrestling. <laughs> you sounded like Jack the Jobber for a second. I guess I'm American Jobber. American uh, Jobber. American, American Jobber. Jobber. American, American Jobber. Jobber. <laughs> <laughs> what about Impact? Well, I, yeah, I am buff. I am the stuff. And the ladies, they just can't get enough. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to it. Uh, first off, it seems that their offices in Nashville will be closing after two nights. Yeah, they're they're done. They're literally they're they're packing their shit. They're moving up north, folks. Yep, they're now they 100% ain't kidding. officially Canadian. Yeah. So, uh, how long till some of those people start applying for their uh, Canadian citizenships? <laughs> I'm wondering if I could actually go up to Toronto and say, hey, can I have a job, please? I yeah, who knows? Maybe I, uh, you I do good talking. Be, uh, you could convince them to be a cameraman. I am good at the camera. Th I am good at the camera thing. Yep, so uh, you could uh, get the good shots. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and speaking of Canadians... Canada's own Laurel Van Ness picked up the first victory of the Knockouts Tournament in a triple threat match with KT Spinelli and a returning Madison Rain. So next week, folks, look for the purple shirt. So yeah, next week we'll be getting the second triple threat match. Yep. And uh, that's where you'll be showing up. Yes, sir. For the purple shirt. Purple Macho Man shirt, right? Purple Macho Man. Classic Macho Man shirt. So it's not exactly dark purple. It's more periwinkle. It's a purple shirt. Let's not mince words here. Sure, whatever you need to tell yourself. I'm like smack bang in the middle. Freaking uh, but third we'll row, ringside. You cannot miss me. No, you are not a tiny, tiny person. No, sir. Uh, speaking of people going to wrestling shows, um, our own Pugsley is going to be going to CZW Cage of Death tomorrow. Oh, good but she for says you. She's not see the actual show, she just wants to meet uh, Jimmy Havoc. Well, enjoy enjoy the graps and, and, and the violence and a bit of the ultra violence. Yeah, she says she's not a big fan of ultra violence, so she's just going to be there to meet Jimmy Havoc and leave because she's not good with the ultra violence. Aww. Yeah, to each his own. I'm not yeah. going to blame her. To each their own. Uh, I know not everyone's a fan of Ultraviolet, although if I was going there, I'd stay for the whole show, even though that would mean like it wouldn't end until 1 a.m. Because sometimes <laughs> it takes them a while to get the Cage of Death set up. It does. Because it can sometimes be a bit of a complex beast. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's to so totally worth it if it all goes on to plan. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Matt Sidell defeated Tyson Duke. So that's Tyson Duke's... Uh, getting another TV t TV appearance. That's good for him. Yeah, it's also another TV loss. Boo. Has he ever, has he won a match in Impact or WWE yet? You know, the sad thing is, I don't think so. Oof. Well, at least he's getting TV time, so there's that. There's you know, that, victories. yeah. For all we know, a year from now, he could be the Impact World Champion. Hey, what well, can only hope... In the words of Eddie Edwards, anything is possible. After all, who would have guessed that Eddie Edwards would be the first non-Japanese person to hold the GHC heavyweight title? 
I didn't. Yeah. So literally, in the world of wrestling, anything is possible. For all we know, by this time next year, Hornswoggle could be the Universal Champion. <laughs> it could happen. Don't say uh, it can't. Because then I'll be laughing at you when it does. Uh, and Evil Rev starring a Higher Maddie chant. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Higher Maddie, be a cameraman. Higher Maddie, be an announcer. Uh, can you be a good ring announcer? I well, do you do a decent deep. job. Yeah, you do have a good radio voice. I think. I, well, I seem to think so. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, then we got. We also got a pretty good uh, little promo segment for Park, Park, and Park. <laughs> nice. Featuring Joseph Park and Chandler Park. And Maddie, guess who played the part of Chandler? Who? Ethan Page. Nice. Moving on so, up. Dude, so they seem to be going all out with finding indie talent for Impact Now. Yep. Which is Listen, good. Good. Yeah, Hire more people. Hire all the indie people. Yeah. Needs more speedball. I, I'll i be shocked if Speedball Mike Bailey is not on Impact by March. I mean, he's facing... He's facing the current X Division champion at the at the uh, DD at the Pro Wrestling Noah event in Japan. So maybe that's setting something up for a future taping. Please, 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 please. Everyone needs to. I would love to see this just because everyone needs to see Mike Bailey on their TV because this guy is wrestling's biggest, best kept secret. He is. He is professional wrestling's. Yeah, you said it. He is. Like with people who've watched the, the 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 pro wrestling World Cup, you you ain't seen nothing. You ain't yeah, seen nothing. Yeah, this guy has so much talent. So much talent, and he keeps getting better and better and better. And speaking of talents, uh, Johnny Mundo defeated Alberto El Patron in a pretty good main event match. After Drake interfered, you know Drake he came out there as mm -hmm. Patron looked like he had the victory in hand. And Patron let himself get distracted, end up attacking uh, Drake. And then uh, he went back in the ring, and Mundo was like, uh, yeah, fuck your hat, I win. <laughs> and then there ended up being a huge smoss. And then Petey Williams got involved. So it seems like we got ourselves a good old Mexican standoff here. Yeah. <laughs> so absolute insanity in the main event in all the best ways. Yipper. Uh, now in our, let's see, uh, some other news. We have Ring of Honor. Yep. We'll be having sometime in 2018 an event in a 10,000 person arena co-produced by the Bullet Club. Essentially, we'll the, the whole story is essentially... Uh, Young Bucks and Cody are, you know, they're scouting events, so they, they could be doing something in uh, Chicago, uh, it could be in uh, London, it could be in uh, LA, it could be in or Ontario, California, which is the same spot they did the quote-unquote Bizclis invasion. I believe uh, Toronto is one of the other places Toronto's as well. Toronto is one of the places, yep. Hashtag all in. This whole thing was born of the fact that, you know, Dave Meltzer said Ring, Ring of Honor would never fill in a, a 10,000 seat venue. And, Cody, and literally, Cody, when those three went, Cody went, challenge accepted. I don't think Dave Meltzer said it was impossible. I think he said it would be a challenge. Something along those or lines. Or would never happen, or, yeah. So something along the lines of not going to happen. So 2018. Personally, I'd love to go. Especially if it's in Toronto. Hey, if it's in Toronto, you bet your you bet your goddamn bottom bottom dollar I'm going to take a seat in that fucking ten thousand seater. We're talking me going to to, to enemy territory to Maple Leaf country. To witness history. Oh, you're a Blue Jays fan and you know it. A Blue Jays fan, yes. Raptors fan, yes. Maple Leafs, fuck them. And y'all would be thinking the same thing after they whipped, they whipped the wings, the Red Wings' ass. 
You know I'm right. Don't say things you're going to regret later, Matty. Dude, they did beat the, the, the Red Wings. And I know you're a little, just a tiny bit pissed off. Like I said, don't say things you're going to regret. I'm just stating facts. Say about that to you. All right, fair enough. I'm just saying the Leafs suck. Or are supposed to suck. But the Leafs are your team. No, Montreal Canadiens. But you're not really Canadian. You're British. <laughs> By the way, they're going to be on TV soon. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait to see that. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I marked out what I saw. Your... You have no idea. They're their big LED LCD screen, DDT. And they said, our tabernak the team. I mark out. They actually called him Let Taba Not the Team. Yes. I wonder if that's going to get bleeped out. Jesus Christ, if it isn't, oh my God. For those who don't know, please translate what Let Taba Not the Team means. It's literally its own swear word. It's untranslatable. Kind of like a. Uh, the best uh, way to. I think kind of like a salty version of Tabernacle, essentially. Uh, essentially, from what I understand, the closest translation to let Tabernacle to team is the fucking team. Basically, Tabernacle is the French Canadian or the French F word. Quite literally. It is literally one of the, fr fr the French, one of the French Canadian uh, words you cannot say on television. So, uh, if it's not bleeped on American TV, I wonder if it'll get bleeped on uh, French TV. <laughs> hey, you know... There's multiple layers to this thing. There, There's a lot of layers. Like, I hope I could ke catch the, the, the one taping that happens at, on a blue moon, but we'll see. We shall see. Shall we move on? Uh, let's see, and uh, let's see, when it comes to local news, uh, you checking course, your yeah, facts? Uh, uh, just, I'm on the Facebook page, I should have written this all down, but uh, tomorrow at 7pm, unfortunately I will not be able to make it, uh, the Lutz Memorial Cup 10th annual one from Veer and Garden Championship Wrestling, it's the last ever one, there's going to be some names involved, and the latest news is the fact that uh, Blake Chadwick, a uh, renowned independent uh, commentator, will be there to call the action. Yay! He's been mainly uh, doing stuff like, I think, uh, maybe in Florida, I think. I, I need to keep better track of what he's doing. But he's been doing uh, commentary throughout all sorts of different independent promotions, and I think he would be a great pickup for any promotion, really, because his voice and his style of uh, calling the action is absolutely great. Mm. So if anybody out there listening, any promoters out there, hire Blake Chadwick. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you didn't hear right, he right and I'm going to hit the button. It's up to 8 o'clock, mother! <laughs> I did say, I clicked the two hours button so I, we can have time to actually do shit. Oh, that's good. Thank you. <sighs> can I can I do the podcast now? Windows. That'd be nice. That'd be Anyways, nice. Um, as usual, VCW will be holding their show at the Norfolk Masonic Temple on Granby Street. And uh, bell time is, oh, it's 7 p.m. Usually 7.30, but no, it's 7. Ooh. Uh, I think they're also going to have a tag team match featuring, uh, featuring uh, Kevin Thorne. Hmm. I think him and Billy Gunn might be teaming up. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, that's all I got. That's it? That's all the news. All right. You know what? Let me get my tablet real quick. And let's get to the thing. Because is it time? It's time. I mean, we got one email, so may as well fill some time. Now we're going to get right to it. It's time for your emails and comments of the week. You can send them at the Russellcast at gmail.com. Hey, while you're at it, if you're on Twitch, uh, which you, you are we're listening to or watching right now, you could, uh, hey, hit that subscribe button at any uh, level, get some emotes, you got your botcher clocks, you got your Dave slaps, and all that jazz, it's a little bit of money, hey, send some bits, 
Hey, support the Twitch thing. And of course, follow. Give us a follow. It's up there. Much appreciate. And I got the tw I got the chat thing working again. So you can actually see when I get the subscription and all that stuff. So there you go. Let's get to it. We got our one email that comes by way. Actually, it comes by way of our good buddy, the hairball. Alright, I do this. And it cuts to rip. So, Fat Boy's been acting weird again. No, 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 no. I mean, weirder than usual. Even for Fat Boy. DM. How so? Rip. He's been mumbling again. Something about the Great Wall and Senior Benjamin again. Fat Boy. Ah! It begins! The owl has thrown the white towel, the broken universe, to its righteous honor. The outcome was wonderful, yes. And now the great war can be begin on the new stage as we fight the darkness of Meek Mahan. Lieutenant Rip, how does goes the rebooting of the illustrious Vanguard One? Rip. On the last communication with Aperture Labs, the robot and uh, upgrades are complete, and uh, it has been dispatched to the Hardy Compound. Fat boy. Upgrades? Oh, delightful! <laughs> Anywho, so Russo decides to run his cocksucker about a spot in Pete Dunn's match, which merely after Dunn and the main man who loves to fight dead. <laughs> Being Finley, probably going to assault against Russo on Twitter, and something about something wonderful began to happen this mass Monday night. And the series of short videos confirms that the breaking and the waking is coming. Also, apparently, Karma decided to pay me back for all these, uh, for all those fuck that owl stuff. Rip, what do you mean, fat boy? Fat boy, my truck's windshield was assaulted by a rather large owl last night before, before uh, the, the night before. Cracked the fuck out of it. Rip does her best Ron Simmons impression of Damn! And the Bucks have sold over 4,400. Uh oh. Let me read this last paragraph and then let's get to the, the, the news, alright? And the Bucks have sold over. I've sold over 400,000 shirts in four months. 400,000. Go ahead, WB. Some more season assists. See, send more C and Ds their way. Can't wait. To, can't wait till Wrestle Kingdom Alpha versus Omega. Need all the pants. Go. Per WWE's Twitter. Mexico, we have just received word. Ah. Last champions, where every championship is on the line. Charlotte Flair will defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against Natalia. Baron Corbin will defend the United States Championship against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler in a triple threat match. And the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, will defend against the New Day and Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin in a tag team triple threat match. There you go. Where the fuck did Dolph Ziggler come from? Out of nowhere? Literally, like, he hasn't even been on TV in three weeks. Anyway, that, yeah, that's a thing. Um, and, I, yeah, it, it just popped up on my Twitter as well, actually. There you go. All right. Off to, back to the uh, to the hairballs. Uh, yeah, sorry for the interruption, but that just hearing Dolph Ziggler in the U.S. title match, I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Without him I, and Root feud was over. Apparently, it's not. Yeah, uh, Super Sentai. Yeah, he's been complaining about his spot in the company <laughs> since yeah, since when has he not? That's kind of been his gimmick for the yeah. past few years. And a musical era has apparently come to an end. The W apparently as they decide to not renew con the contract of Jim Johnston and apparently CFO is behind this. So it's been reported that they've been wanting him gone for a while. Uh, listen, I'm not going to go get into this shit, okay? I'm not. 
Winners, House Hot Hand merging victorious against the Evil Owl. Jim Johnston, you faithfully served WWE for 30 years, composing some of the most iconic themes of all time. Definitely worthy of a Hall of Fame spot. Losers, Russo, dude, stop trying to stay relevant. Granted, Cornette is doing the same, but at least he's entertaining at it. You, however, are not. CFOs, if it's true and you assets are behind uh, Johnston's departure, fuck you. Again? Stand behind it. Stay, stand away from it. Meanwhile, meanwhile. Oh, fat rip. Oh, fat boy. We procured that other creature you asked us to. Camera. <laughs> Camera pans to the dungeon to a yellow square locked up. Fair, fat boy. Please procure my coat of battle. There you go. And I hit the dab button, and uh, yeah, that folks, that's it. That's that's the thing. <laughs> Those are your emails and comments of the week. You can send them on the Russellcast at gmail dot com. And I forgot the there you go. I forgot to switch the thing. There, there's the thing on the screen right there. And uh, I agree, Johnston for Hall of Fame. Hey, you know what? We got a little bit of time. You want to do a Q and A real quick? Uh. If we have time after the third segment. All right, fair enough. Let me hit the button again. So those are emails and comments of the week. Send them at the Russellcast at gmail.com. We shall return with our tribute to Jim Johnston when we come back. Don't go far, folks. And now a word from our sponsors. The secret of my success before every matchup, I pump up with this arrogance. It's today's man in a classic can. The fragrance that overpower, overwhelms, and pins down the competition. Mm. It's arrogance for men until we meet. This is WMOB Mobile, 12 on your channel dial and 12 in the TV ratings. Upon the examination of the galaxies of space, images begin to appear. Images of strange and powerful forces. But of all the forces in the universe, the two most powerful, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, prepare to explode. Champion versus champion, title for title, it's the ultimate challenge, it's WrestleMania! And we're back here on the Russell Cast, presented by RV Tatum Kim and on the BrookedInfinite.com, Potterback.com, iTunes, and podcasting places. Of course, we're live on Twitch.tv. Hit that subscribe button. Manager JTWK here with you, and uh, yeah, and uh, people are going nice trans uh, transition. I know, right? Went from uh, classic Johnston to Adam Massacre's version of it. Hey, he Indeed, is on man. YouTube. He is on YouTube. Oh. By the way, uh, I take it that you watched the latest Todd in the Shadows video? No, I have not. He did uh, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo by Rick Derringer. Oh, how appropriate is that? Yeah, for those who don't know Rick Derringer, real American. You can thank him for that. Although it did end on kind of a down note when it turns out that apparently he's gone into full, full on conspiracy theorist mode. Oh, uh, mm. so that's kind of sad. Yeah, a little bit. At least he had those two good songs. Yeah, 
that that is very true. Somebody who has not sold their career in any way whatsoever, as far as we're aware, Jim Johnston. Yeah. So do do, do I hit the button? Do I? I think I think I think we need to hit the After button. After all this time, yes, finally hit that button, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while, but it's time for a Russell Cast countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Our topic this week, and this should come in with a little bit of a caveat, because it's not our pick for, like, our, our the greatest theme songs of all time. It's just our list of our favorite Jim Johnston tunes, and T-Dub, T-Dub and I have been, like, we've been rewriting this list in our heads and on paper for, like, several times. So yeah. this is definitely not the, the definitive, and we'll definitely bring up others. But uh, and feel free in the chat to bring it up. That's on the screen. Anything that's uh, du- uh, classic WBF all the way up to like 2005, 2006, 2007, 08. Bring it up. It's more if it's not by a popular band, it's been made by Johnston. Essentially, pretty much. And there's a few exceptions, but uh, let's go with number five. Number five for me is Break the Walls Down! Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> oh, this yeah. Jericho's theme. Don't blame you there. Jer- and it's not on my list, so there you go. That's how you know. Yeah, uh, the classic starts with a little countdown. Yeah. And then, boom, Pyro! You know what got you? Yeah! <laughs> Break the Walls Down! Ba, 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 ba. By the way, apparently, uh, I remember Chris Jericho just when this DVD came out, he's like, yeah, I still don't know the words to my own theme song. <laughs> I wonder if he's learned them by now. <laughs> well, we could probably uh, use OSW's uh, version of it. You're going to leave. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, number five, Undertaker. The classic uh, organ history? theme. Which version? There's there are so many of them. I mean, the classic organ theme. The my favorite though. The 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 the, the Prince of Darkness, the Lord of Darkness. Ministry. The Ministry. Heavy on the guitar. You know what I mean. But uh, yeah, number four. Number four for me is. I'm an ass man. Bum, bum. Yeah, I'm an ass man. Bum, bum. Damn, that's another one that's off my list. <laughs> that's your number four? No, that's not on my list. You know what number four is? DX. Oh, that's another good one. Bum, 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 bum. That's got a reggae beat. Oh, now, he's also uh, co-written by Chris Warren. Chris Warren who wrote the lyrics of it. Johnson handled the, the the heavy lifting of the music there. Uh, volume three or volume four? Volume four version. Hairball. Definitely volume four version. Uh, is there uh, that much of a difference for the DUDX themes? Uh, I think he was talking about uh, Undertaker actually. Ah, ah right, yeah. right. Because uh, yeah, Taker had two versions. One for volume three, though volume three had a good one too. But volume four for sure. It's the more memorable. Uh, number three. Number three for me is he's just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. <laughs> he's not your boy toy. Boy toy. He's just a sexy boy. Sexy, sexy boy. boy. <laughs> yeah, the classic Shawn Michaels theme. <laughs> that he still uses when he's in his late 40s. I, I Hall of Fame, everybody! <laughs> Only he could pull that off. Yeah. Once again, that just instant hook. Like, that's the one thing that Jim Johnston is good at. Just getting that hook right into you. The boom, 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 boom. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, 
Number three. three not for me. Number three for me. The end is here. The game oh, I wasn't even is thinking over. Paper -paper. Anytime back from like 2000 up to like 2005, 2006, the end. You want yeah, you want a Hell in a Cell I match or like a like a heavy tomb of like you want to set the mood that theme song right there. Did that, he also that song. Uh, make the WrestleMania theme? The classic Mania theme, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking pay per view themes. Wow. I was thinking, yeah, I'm thinking anything that Johnston made. He's made yeah, a lot like, of shit for those one word. He I made a lot of many, stuff. I forgot how many classic pay per view themes he made. I know he did the Rumble, Mania, I believe Survivor Series. Anything from the classic Hogan era. Yeah. Pretty much him. And apparently, Hairball said. A terrible, I think, referencing my age, Shawn Michaels theme song. He says I did that way too, a bit too well. Yeah, a little too well. <laughs> and he did a cover. Yeah, he did a cover to the WrestleMania 2000, in California. Yeah, brawl for all. Yeah, okay, but the music oh, was oh, good. The, the song was good. The song. The song was good. was good. So good they remixed it for uh, Ezekiel Jackson. So that's how good it is. Number two. Number two, one of the best songs from the Attitude Era, Gangrel's theme, or the Brute yes. theme. Yes. Like, once again, just so many good hooks in these songs. Oh, yeah. It just grabbed you right from the start. You're so good at that. Oh, I'm nerding out because <laughs> we're, we're, we're this is like the first time we have completely different lists so far. Yeah, usually we usually have at least one or two in common. But it's like, but they're all good. That's the, that's like the thing, you know. That's yeah. Also, this is just how many songs he made, and we can just keep going on and on after this list is over. And we I think we're going. I think we're going to do that. I think we might do that. Possibly. Possibly. We we have time to kill. Number two for me. Armageddon 2000, you know what the theme was? And one sound by Leonard, Leonard Skinner. It was an actual remix of Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. Now listen to the paper. Watch the paper at the very beginning. You'll notice it is very different. And there is no there is no way to find a full version of it. And that's the sad part. Oh, that is a bunch of baloney. I know. Like, you'll find them on YouTube. You know... Armageddon 2000 theme song. It's just a Leonard Skinner version. Believe me, let, I actually have it on my watch later. And I'll only get, I, I can only play like a few seconds, but you'll hear the difference. I, mean, I definitely can. And there we go. There it is. Loading. There we go. There you go. That's all I can yeah, play. A lot heavier. That's a lot it's heavier. a lot heavier. It's a heavier version. But yeah. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, ID'd or nothing. Uh, well, we are on, we are on Twitch, Twitch which is a lot. Which is a lot of, that would suck, but Twitch has been a lot more lenient to our knowledge. So, but you know, I'm not taking too much chances. Again, I played the intro of the WrestleMania six, so <laughs> dangle that sword of can't damn I don't know I don't know if it's close into my head or not. Anyway. Um if, if I swear if this Twitch channel gets striked as well. I swear. No over, less, uh, over a Jim Johnston cover? Good lord. Yeah. Um <laughs> number, one, number one. Number one. Number one. I'm not even going to sing this because I cannot do this justice. Number one, Jim Johnson's song. Let me just pull this up here. One second, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Just got just to pull up my phone. Uh, that's not what I want. Uh-oh. 
There it is. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, it has. Wow, that's interesting. Anyways, uh, here it is. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep, 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 yep. Easily one of, if not the most recognizable theme song in pro wrestling. The glass shatters, the song hits, everyone pops, everyone goes crazy. Steve Austin walks out, stunners people left, stunners people to the right, stunners people on the ramp, stunners people on the ring, stunners anyone who gets close to him, drinks beers, leaves, has fun. Pretty much. I just... I was really conflicted between that and the Rocks theme song. Tell you what, let me let me alleviate uh, the them them quells. You know what my number one is? What the Rock is cooking. The Rock says, the Rock says. And in case oh, you're wondering, was... this is the two ninety eight ninety nine version, which is my yeah. favorite. I actually prefer the 2000, 2000 to 2002 version. Hey, I'm not knocking it because the 2000, the, two, the 2001 and 2002 was awesome. The, the, if you smell, but for me, it's like, the, for me, it fit the swagger. It, it depends on, uh, on, on like if that version, the one I, I'm picking, it fit the swagger of the rock. Uh, I did, did, especially of the like sort of like elitist corporate rock. Yeah. Yeah. It it, yeah, it, 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 did, it, it, it it added to the rock swagger. Speaking of Jack again, Swagger, that theme song was awesome too. <laughs> uh, so, what are your favorite film ones? I mean, chat, help yeah, us out a little bit. Chat, you know? I'd love to hear from you. We only gave you like ten or eleven of them, or twelve. I know this there's one. a few in there. Here's some other ones that he's done. Uh, Rin in my face, Shamus's old theme. Yeah. Y'all gonna pray? Y'all gonna pray? <laughs> oh, you didn't know? Bow, bow, bow. Your posterior bear contacts someone at once. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> no, if we're gonna do it, do we're gonna do it right. <laughs> you were not aware of this? <laughs> Your posterior bear contacts someone at once. <laughs> and if you're not done with that, we have two words for you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter, I believe that was uh, Chris Warren and uh, Jim Johnson. Chris Warren, did, uh, yeah, the original play. music was Jim Johnson and Warren. Johnson did the arranging. And Motorhead eventually just, they just came in and Motorhead did a version of it. Too, but yeah, pretty much my time. Yeah, one, two. Is this all? Uh, let's see. Uh, he yeah. did here to show the world. Yep. Came in. Bring it up. And LPH, get out. What did he? Muhammad Hassan. That's actually a good song. I like that song. It is, but I think he was trying to troll. Oh, how could I not put this one in one of my the cheesiest favorite songs from uh, from the uh, last era? Meat on the table, that's what you want. Feed you to me roll, but you won't more. get too far. <laughs> Give me some of that right back. Wow. APA, yeah. APA. People are having to say my time. One, two, is this on? <laughs> like this last time, it's literally just doing mouth covers. <laughs> of course, there's also Goldust theme. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, Evan Hunter Gale. Beep, beep, beep. It's Taz. It's Taz. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
<laughs> More misunderstood lyrics. Oh, how can we not mention this one? And a Mr. McMahon's theme. F oh God, yes. How can we not? The theme song where when you hear it, you have to walk like you have grapefruits. Yeah. Wow. No chance in hell. It's so powerful. Even Conor McGregor's doing a billionaire strut. <laughs> yeah, he did do that once. He did. <laughs> Sang the song, too. Uh, L -O -G, oh. uh, ooh. My boy's theme. Test theme. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, the one Billy Gunn's theme. <laughs> it's the first first theme I heard him come out to. Owen Hart. There's there's too many, but yeah, all of them for Owen. Yeah. Oh, Perry Siren's uh, old siren theme. <laughs> oh, LOD's. Uh, thing. Was that Jimmy Hart? Was that Jimmy Hart? Uh, LOD, the. Ooh, what a rush. That may have been just before Johnston came in. Let me just look it up just to be sure. Hmm. Meanwhile, for those wondering. Hey, let's see. Uh, Damn it. Uh, yeah, Damn that was Jim Hart who did the who did the Road Warriors theme. As far as I can know, they uh, Jim Johnston did do LOD two thousand. LOD two thousand, yeah. Not a bad, not a bad song. Not the worst. Chris Benoit. Yeah. Of course, then that would be uh, reworked by uh, Our Lady Peace mm. into a classic song. And that was a classic song. Also, this one. Really fuck fish for that copyright strike, Jesus. Oh god. <laughs> oh, of course, one of my favorite themes. Somebody call my mama. Somebody oh, call my mama. Won't summer breeze come my mama? Ernest the Cat Miller. <laughs> Actually, uh, he did the uh WWE version. Yeah. The reworked version. Yeah. Uh let's see, of course. Uh, let's see what other songs. Uh, do, do, do. Ba, 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 da, ba, 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 So, so many. Too many to mention. Like, the we're Big gonna... Show's theme song. Uh, well. He did your favorite theme song, Maddie. What? Looking like a bunch of cats. Oh, God. Looking down my little stars and bad. Yeah. Joe Bob, you want to handle this one? Thanks. I'm going to pretend you did not say that. Crash Holly. Yes. Actually, Crash Holly, interesting thing. That was the first theme song I ever heard in an arena. Really? Crash Holly versus Shelton Benjamin in a dark match. Awesome. Yeah, I guess he shall mention during his rookie year. This is, like I said, this is before even Team Angle ben Benjamin. Ooh. Yeah, that that's old school. And uh, yes, he will have uh, Mac Militant, Teddy Long's theme, was yep. Jim Johnston. Yep. Which was originally used for Rodney Back. Yeah. For the White Boy Challenge. <laughs> because 2003. <laughs> Come see this black man beat down a whole bunch of crackers. <laughs> that was literally the gimmick, ladies and gentlemen. That was the gimmick. The, the, re the reverse racism thing. 
Vince McMahon is fucking weird. <laughs> yes, yes. Also, uh, I remember them on Taylor, Taylor on commentary talking about Dion. He's like, he ain't black. That man's brown. He ain't a real brother. <laughs> he essentially said that on commentary. <laughs> Whoa, that's not PG. <laughs> no, people often, uh, I think people often forget just how far over the line they went. Like, holy shit. Not only would they not get this, away with this today, but they probably shouldn't. They shouldn't get away with it. Oh, JBL. What was JBL's theme? Uh, bum, da, ba, da, da, bum, 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 bum. Kane. Yeah, Kane's original theme. Dun 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 Let's see, JBL is theme song, theme song, theme song, theme song. Uh, Kurt. Long, yep, Longhorn by Jim Johnston. Metal. Kurt. Yep, another one. Bomp. <laughs> hurricane, yeah, Hurricane. Oh, that's another good one. Actually, a good example, WWE Anthology. Oh, 100% yeah. 100% like, of it, Johnston. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, like uh, most of the like Hogan era, that's Jimmy Hart. Then you get to the Edge era, that's Johnston. And then you get to the uh, Ruthless Aggression era, which then was just called Currents because, well, it was go the current era at the time. That was Johnston as well. Yeah. Godfather, of course, Godfather. Tom, come aboard the. Oh, train. Uh, let me see if this theme song was made by John Stan. Looking it up. Wait for the page to load. Loading. Uh, Loading. Yep. Rey Mysterio 619 theme. Oh, yeah. The, the, the original one, yeah. Who's it's that Chris. jumping off the boat? R-O-N Mysterio. Ah! My name is, my name is blown. Oh, LPH was a good one. Christian! Christian! I can't do the high notes. Christian! At last! Christian! At last! You're, you're on your own! Uh, Rico, I think that's also referring to the Billy and Chuck theme. Yeah. Do you look so good, good to, to me. me oh god i have to sing that again Ugh. the original theme of my net raw 93 you bet your ass like seriously we could go all night on this yeah. We, we could. <laughs> we should, probably I, should, but... <laughs> did he also do the classic SmackDown theme? I mm -hmm. uh, you know the... <laughs> yep, that was him. <laughs> that was him. And of course, uh, I Want It All, the hip-hop theme that they had in 03. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He also uh, wrote uh, the made the instrumental for Rise Up, which was then used by Drowning Pool. Yep. So good stuff. Anyway, so, shall we do winners and losers? Okay, okay. I guess I guess we're done squeeing over this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my losers would be. Uh, WWE creative for just how similar the two women's divisions feel at the moment. Yeah, if if nothing else, the uh, yep. the SmackDown team is looking a little better because they actually have a fucking win. You know. Yeah, win over the champion, no less. Yeah, and Raw, all they got is absolution is a mystery. Boom. Boom. That's Boom. it, and that's it. Another another Motorhead Jim Johnston joint right there. Oh, Jim Johnston was involved in that as well. Nice. Yeah, well, he he, he I think, believe he wrote uh, some of the music. He had a help. I know that. Anyway, 
Uh, loser is a creative. Uh, just a copy and paste of it. It's just, you know, it's, it's not helping. Not at all. And Vince McMahon for okaying it all. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, the Randy Orton Mario Kart pick is almost done. <laughs> nice. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, my God. That's coming up next week, isn't it? That's got to be next week. I can't Robert, wait. You, sh- you, I- you complete it next week. We're going to show the fuck out of it next week. Oh, I haven't heard you say I didn't get into wrestling until 01. Well, same here. That's when I started watching wrestling as well. 2001 as well, yeah. Yeah, I just I went back and watched a whole bunch of older stuff over the... Wow, it's almost been 20 years I've been watching this. Jesus Christ, where's the time gone? I know. Hey, J-Dub. Fuck world. No kidding. Just, just Do you know when I... The moment I felt really old was? What? Me and another co-worker at work... Uh, about a month ago, we were talking about Super Smash Bros. Mm. And he brought up the fact that me and him, we've been playing Smash Brothers longer than some of our co-workers have been alive. Ow. My childhood. Yeah, because some of our co-workers are like 16, 17 years old. So they were not even alive when the original Smash Brothers was released on the N64. <laughs> Ow. My childhood. How do you think that felt? I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh. How the oh. fuck do you think I feel? <laughs> That's going to be you in a couple years there, bud. I already feel old because now people are like, oh, the Nintendo 64. That's a really, really old ancient console. And I'm like, thanks. Oh. I discover you're playing Mystical Ninja. By myself, then. Thanks, thanks for that. Thanks, John. I'll be myself. Don't want to be all bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, let's do winners before we get too sad here. Winners, first off, Ethan Page for making it onto national television. Yes. And, of course, the life and career of Jim Johnston. That, Absolute yeah. amazing composer. <laughs> hey, Al Page, how the fuck do, we, you, do you think we feel? He says, fuck you, Timmy King, you're making me feel old again. I was like, how the fuck do you think we feel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just. <sighs> yep, I remember. Yep, yep, yep. I still remember when Vice City came out and there was a huge scuffle about that. Jesus Christ, I know. I remember I, I, when I bought that, I had to sneak that by my parents so they wouldn't catch me playing that because that was a huge thing. Like, they wouldn't let you play it? No, like, they would let me play GTA 3, but not Vice City. All because of cocaine is a hell of a drug. No, because of the supposed graphic sexual content. <laughs> <laughs> oh god they must have thrown a shit fit at san andreas uh no actually they did not because they never heard about the hot coffee incidents probably best that we leave it that way <laughs> just like, oh my god i just feel old here's how old i was when i was a teenager tony x pro skater was still a thing uh when I was young, we were renting video games at the video store. That's how old I am. That's actually the, how I first played Super Mario RPG because originally I uh, I wanted my dad to rent uh, a Nintendo and Mario 64, but they didn't have that. So my dad got Super Mario RPG and a Super Nintendo. <laughs> and so that's my first ever RPG. Oh, and Hairball brings up Candy Sucks. Yeah, yeah tits on the mission. building. <laughs> Fuck that mission. That was difficult to tell because those are some really bullshit oh motorcycle controls. The motorcycle, the plane. My God, the plane gave me all, always gave me the, some, some shit. Oh, you're talking about San Andreas? Oh, that too. Anyways, Maddie, who are your winners? I got, I got two of them. Uh, obviously, Jim Johnston for one hell of a career. And uh, this is unrelated to wrestling, but uh, my Uber driver today. 
Gets a winner oh yeah, this week. you got an interesting story to tell. Here's here, okay. Here's um, I went to a job interview, which I, I you know, part of me is like, I, I hope I get it. There's another part of me, so please don't. I, I kind of like having this this cushy cushy thing, and as much as I hate that job, sometimes like it's I love the schedule. I don't want to fuck it up. Anyway, yeah, we are uh, so humans are creatures of habit, and more so me than anything else. So. Uh, I take the I do my job. I take the bus to uh, South Keys to a Walmart to a Walmart to save myself from some money on an Uber, and to see if I could get some uh, some holiday shopping done, which I did, and I got some snack and a lunch for 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 work, which is always a bonus. And I uh, I, I decide, hey, you know what? It's 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 a little too far for the bus. Let me get to the Walmart, pick up a thing, I'll grab an Uber to work. It's, a, it's always an easy 20 bucks. I'm down with paying 20 bucks to get to work on time. So uh, I, I, go, I, I go, I do my business and everything else. I, and I go outside and I'm like, all right, Tain, of course, you got to get away for the fucking GPS. We got to make sure you got it. And uh, there, oh, there we go. All right. Time to all right, I confirm Uber. And I'm, I'm listening to, uh, I'm actually uh, listening back to uh, Do the Right Thing. They did, uh, you know, uh, our buddy is Zach uh, Gibby, Zach McGibbon. From wrestling yep. with with ideas, he did the call for uh, for do the right thing, which was the the Ottawa scenes response to the uh, incident that happened earlier this year. And uh, I was listening to that, and I'm like, I'm just chilling, checking Facebook, getting a notification from Uber. I was like, Hey, nice, all right, all right. All right who's my writing? He's like, John is picking a hey, John is picking you up with in a Tesla Model S. I'm like, Okay, I was like, Wait, what? Tesla Model S. And uh, folks, uh, Uber wasn't kidding. I got picked up in a I, I got a ride in a in a Tesla Model S. Did it feel as futuristic as it looked? I'll, I'll tell you what, that uh, that uh, 17 inch tablet screen up there felt fucking looked fucking awesome. The guy was bragging about it, about the car too. I was like, I was like, so this is the Model S, and he was showing off the, 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 the about section on the tab, but he was showing other things and how they're gonna do an update with the Star Wars gimmick, and I'm like, oh, it, the, the ride was smooth, and folks, when they tell you that that thing is fucking fast, we hit the highway for 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 quick for quick uh, for a quick jolt. They ain't kidding. Oh, Hairball isn't a fan of the Tesla. Oh god, it's a Tesla hit the pussy pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero to sixty in two seconds. Okay, can your car do that? Mine can't, and I don't even know in a car. By the way, that you know, people saying, Oh, it's it's that it's like this. I'm telling you, for a hundred thousand dollar car, I'm like, hey, dude, this feels this like I'm like, I'm like the scene. Also, like, I had a big fat grin on my eyes. Like, my God. <laughs> Air Ball South Park reference, by the way. Yeah. I'm like, the image episode. of a Tesla Model S rolling into an, a Walmart. <laughs> I'm still, like, giggling over that. But you know, that was awesome. And fucking yeah. A. How was your day? Well, mine was. I don't matter. I was in a Tesla Model S, motherfucker. Put your mother head. Put your motherfucking head back down. And I am jealous because that's one groovy car. Oh, that's a. It's a beauty. It is an absolute beauty. Yeah, from what I understand, good handling. Uh, oh. Extremely uh, good mileage. Yeah, four hundred twenty-four kilometers. Let's see. For Tesla on one charge. Model S. <laughs> Let me just look up some of the stats on this baby, because I'm not really a car guy personally. If we had car junkie here, I'm sure he could tell us a lot. Oh, more. we need car junkie. He'd be jealous as hell. Yep, that he is would. A very... He would pull a Tex Ferguson. That is a very nice looking car. Oh car junkie! Uh, if you're listening to this, please email me with a Tex Ferguson joke next week. I will get a kick out of it. Let's see, and very nice to see electric motor, uh, battery with some really good uh, 
I imagine those are good numbers. I'm not yeah. exactly familiar with those <laughs> measurements. All right, there you go. Anyway, okay, that well, is... Uh, check out. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a couple of things. You're still getting over your, your Let's Plays. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been kind of lazy on those. I'm going to try to get back to them. You're, next, you're still I'm posting. Some, you're still posting. Yeah, I'm going to do some uh, more infamous Second Son videos next. <laughs> and hopefully within the next four to five days, my laptop will be here. Awesome. And LPH, I wish. I, I tried to take pictures, but you know you know what people feel about their privacy and everything. I mean, not the driver itself, just people around. It's like, hey, you're not allowed to take pictures. I was like, dude, I will take pictures. Like, no, you're not allowed. All right, fair enough. I'll just ride the fucking car. But I've taken a picture of the Uber receipt, which actually details the Tesla Model S name. You cannot Photoshop that shit. <laughs> also, he'd be jealous of that. Yes, Hairball. Yes, he would. Uh, and, of course, Game Crew. Uh, we're up to uh, Contra 3, uh, Contra 3 The Alien Wars with uh, Easy and Ace. So there you go. And uh, and uh, pretty much that's pretty much it. We're just got the recap and everything else. Let's do the thing. Um, Sunday uh, helps him with Tony Helms with the crew doing some more. Saturday. S Saturday. Yep. Uh, you know if Tony feels like going live, he will go live tomorrow. Yes, uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> just so just be sure to follow him on Twitter at Tone Loke thirty nine oh two for all the updates on that. Ooh, second son. Didn't get a chance to play that. Ooh. Well, I got to see someone play that. Uh, on Sunday, it took a rest live. We're back to a regular schedule, and we got we get two new shows. We're gonna keep watching them. So we got uh, uh, Common Rider Build, Q Ranger, uh, and uh, we got uh, uh, Space Sheriff Gavon. All of the '80s, awesome. And on, uh, of course, on that note, we ended with uh, Hurry Kinger. Jeez, I like cheese. On Monday, the Shades plays is playing Illusion of Gaia. On Tuesday, Riff down with Tony Helms with uh, with the uh, that 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 that. Riff down, with Tina became the crew. They're doing mine. Sons, Mike Shell actually. Yep, Tuesday was Mike Shell's last yeah. week. It's very sad to see him go. But I'm, work gonna, is work. I'm going to legitimately miss him, even if he does kind of make things a bit <laughs> lesser some weeks with his reference of a certain show that we will not mention. <laughs> Gavon's in the 80s, not the 70s there, uh, Evan. 80s. That is 80s cheese. On Wednesday, the enemy within TRPG, a thing with uh, myself, the Shades, Lady K, Bi Hybrid, Mike Shell, and our, our DM, Mildred Monk. Folks. Yeah. It's gonna be a thing, you know. We're, you know, it's it's uh, the, the 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 fit will hit the sham. <laughs> and on Thursday, it's our last Ranger recap of the year, where we take a look at the Christmas edition uh, special for Power Rangers Ninja Steel. How will they recover their their thing, their powers? Without the ninja thing, and it's like, no, we didn't like the last episode, folks. We didn't. Anyway, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hey, if you like what you're doing, hey, hit that follow button if you haven't already. Hey, there's a, there's a subscription. You can hit that. You can pay us. You can get some emotes, and you get to support us. There you go. Thing. Yeah. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at MattyJ316 at TWK Official. Support us on Patreon on TWK's Patreon on patreon.com slash TWK Reviews. Of course, I got a thing. KO slash FI KO uh, hyphen FI coffee.com slash MattyJ. Hey, three bucks. Hit the button. It's right over there. And of course, uh, if if of course if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that little bell. We also we always appreciate the hit like and stuff and things. But until that, hey, that's the show, folks. We thank you very much for tuning in. We thank you very much for the love and support and all that good stuff. On behalf of TWK, 
Until next time, this is TWKFT to make you sunny to work in your America. My name's Manager Mike Hill, professional wrestling sports independent promotion as soon as possible. And yeah, that trailer for Andre. That's going to be HBO. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that next week. We'll watch it. We will react. Have a good one. Have a safe one. We will, su- we will talk to you next week, folks. Uh, we're doing Clash of Champions next week, right? I believe we're doing Clash uh, of Champions next week. Possibly. Possibly. Go wrong. I mean, possibly. That's very funny that I've gone wrong today. Crusty joke. Have a good one. Have a safe one. We'll take a... We'll take a look. We'll, 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 we're taking a break. We're going to be right back next week. Have a good one. Have a safe one. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Man, I told you hard and heavy. I told you rock and roll. Well, Steve, that wasn't... That wasn't rock and roll. It's just a different look at Stone Cold Steve Austin. Broaden, mm. broaden, broaden your character, you know. It's just a different look at Stone Cold Steve... I'm not looking for a different look at Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay, I well, told you what I wanted. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Clearly, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. What would make it more to your liking? You want me to show you something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which guitar can what, I use? The, the, the six-string acoustic guitar right, that's leaning right next to you there on the guitar stand. Jim, an acoustic guitar has no place on this track. Well, you know, if you play it hard, sometimes, you know, it's amazing the, the, the depth you can get out of an acoustic. Why don't you just pick up the guitar and see what you think? Okay. Let me pick up the acoustic guitar and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you see? Did you see the way my foot went right through the strings and crashed in all Yeah, yeah I, I did. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just so funny. You know what? Look at this one, Jim. It was an antique. Now you can go buy a new one. Why are you gonna sit and play this old polish when you go buy your brand new one? It's a good point. Charge it to Vince. <laughs>